So Amos, did you finish something here? I ask you to take a look at it. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. I just like started looking at it. Then, like, uh, you draw me attention back to the translation. Okay. Okay. Then let's do it together. Let's go to Psalm 23. And you know, this is uh, uh, what is it? One of the most popular Old Testament passages. And how I going to uh, utilize this syntax uh, information? Go to the part and check all those pink. And especially pay attention to the syntax book or Zeshenius and Murauka, but we are not really dealing with this one, so skip it, and Waltz and O'Connor. So you can see that we have uh, one thing here uh, used together with the reference. So this is where you have to take a look at. So you don't need to really look at this noun, okay, because you don't have reference so you just apply the same rule before you take a look at this you need to really pay attention to the title in order for you to start from the general idea about what you are going to talk about so uh, you are going to deal with an issue of prefix conjugation okay prefix conjugation none Perfective. What do you mean? Non-perfective. It's imperfect. So then you can just get that idea that okay, probably it deals with a case there, uh, case that uh, prefix form is used as an imperfect sense. Okay, understanding this, then let's click on it. Uh, I think I need to change the format. Just give me, give me a second. going to uh, this is better so that I can show you whatever pop Excuse me, we cannot hear anything. We are muted. Okay, sorry. Can you hear me? All right, thank you. I accidentally clicked on the mute. Okay, let me start from the beginning. Uh, perhaps when, when you see this pop-up screen, you just immediately look at the specific part and you can see that, oh, it has something to do with this statement. A negated form can be used with a corresponding sense. And this is a specific part. Yahweh is my shepherd, I will not lack. But you know, before we just came to this specific part, you understand what is all about. This one should be about the uses of prefix form. Am I right? And where can you see the prefix form? So the Lord is my shepherd and then not. So I will not lack. So this one is prefix form. So probably you can understand, oh, now this passage is talking about this specific case. But and yet there is a difficulty to understand what it means. 
then what do you need to do? You just move on to the parts B. Actually, this 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 belongs to B in a broader sense. So you need to look at this. These examples and many more suggest that the prefix conjugation may represent a future situation, which is not really new, right? Because it should be in complete action. But this following section is important as dependent or contingent on some other expressed or unexpressed situation. So with reference to the time of speaking, the situation may be future or past. If the action is in the future, um, the sense is of a specific future. So it deals with this notion. Let's talk about this. And you don't really understand what it means. Okay, I, I can just broaden my understanding here. All right, this one deals with uh, what is that? The future situation as dependent. Now I'm following it. So previously you understand, okay, prefix form can be used to denote the incomplete action, but as a dependent is somehow important here. So your idea uh, is expanded to this sense. And let's move on. Let's start from the general sense of a future tense. That is started with the prefix conjugation is used to represent the real situation which arise as a sense, as a consequence of some other situation. So now you can see that, oh, it deals with the relationship, okay? Prefix form can be used as a consequence of some other situation. Are you following me? So it's not simply talking about the future tense, okay, of course. Prefix form should be understood as an incomplete action, and that is normally translated in the past, uh, in the future tense. But it deals with a consequence of some other situation as a future tense, whereas the suffix conjugation may dramatically represent the future situation as an accidental event. So you can see that even suffix form can uh, mean a future situation, but it will be used as a verb reversive, as you know. But it is an accidental event. There is no sense of consequence. Are you following me? Are you following me? So that is what this uh, uh, information is all about. So understanding this, then what can you see? So let's go back to B. These examples and many more suggest that the prefix conjugation may represent the future situation as dependent on some other expressed or unexpressed situation. So now you can understand when we translate, uh, translate, where, where are you? And then more negated form can be used with a corresponding sense. So now it deals with consequence. Now, when we translate the word aksar, which means I will not lack, it's not simply I will not lack, but it deals with the consequence. So now, this one is, a, is a, what is it? The, the idea of what has happened. And then you need to look at the previous uh, word. What is it? Then let's go back to part again. What is it? And this one is uh, a song of David. So let's start from here. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack anything. So when you translate this, this one is not simply indicating the future tense, but should be a consequence of the previous sentence, which is the Lord is my shepherd. Do you understand? So there is a what is it, um, very um, tight relationship between these two ideas. So it doesn't simply mean I will not act. Why? Because 
The Lord is my shepherd. So when you are, um, uh, what is it, talking about this passage, this is very important. It's not really independent idea that the Lord is my shepherd, and then I will not share, I will not uh, lack anything. But there must be a tight relationship between two. So this syntactical information uh, provides a important exegetical point. Do you understand? Of course, it's not really easy. So first of all, you will go to the specific part, but and yet it's hard to understand. Why? Without looking at the big picture, the general description of it is the whole part. And then you need to narrow it down and narrow it down. And you finally understand what it really means. So one of the reasons why you find it so much hard to understand this given information is because you just to focus on the specific part. Sometimes you need to start from the beginning of the specific portion and then narrow it down and narrow it down and understand it. Do you understand? And it will help you. So it, this is an, an example. So when you deal with these uh, syntactical issues, make it sure that you understand the title first. Start from the general idea and then narrow it down and narrow it down and understand why this specific passage is used as a reference here in light of what was previously discussed. Then you can understand it better. Okay? Isn't it amazing? You know, you can always say, all right, uh, in the passage, you can preach like, the Lord is our shepherd. That's why we will not lack anything. This is it's quite common sense, but in terms of Hebrew grammar, you can really make what is it the Persian emphasize saying in terms of Hebrew grammar, there is high relationship and then it intentionally emphasizes the consequence of not lacking anything. Okay, so in, in terms of English translation. You can still find the notion there, but in terms of biblical Hebrew, you can intentionally highlight the connection. Then the message becomes stronger, more meaningful, isn't it? So that's why you need to really uh, just don't give up, okay? And although you, we can understand this here, sometimes you may find a lot of difficult things, but you know what? The more you read it, the easier concept you will understand. And the, the, what is it? The easier uh, the sentence you will find. So don't give up, just to practice. And then uh, someday you, you, you will be, you know, confidently, uh, what is it? Uh, dealing with those issues. Okay. So I bought, I know uh, the difficulty will be still there. But this is an example of how to start analyzing or understanding the syntactical issues. Okay? So uh, start from the general concept and then the introduction and go down, go down to the specific passage where this uh, biblical passage is used as a reference. Do you have any question? Okay. Anyway, I believe you will be able to learn something from your friends as they present their assignment. And, you know, you just learn this. And in terms of the level of your uh, presentation, it could be, it may be, it may not be as satisfactory as we expect, but what is really important is the fact that you you just start applying those knowledge and skills to your own study. Okay. Uh, if you don't have any question, then I'm going to see you on Thursday. And then I'm quite excited about this class presentation from Tikara and James. I'm sure that we are going to enjoy it. All right. So God bless you all and see you on Thursday. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you.